I'm Lindsay. We're here with Steve Perry at Billboard. We're going to be talking about the incredible new album, Traces, that came out on Friday. That's right. How was release weekend? Really great. Really great. We had a good time. Nice. Yeah. So this was, what, 25 years since your last solo album. Yeah. When you realized that the work was done, what was that moment like? How did you feel? Well, it's never really done because <laughs> as soon as the record was done, we went to mastering. And after we went to mastering, we went to cutting vinyl. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we had to approve uh, test pressings of vinyl. So it was always sort of like a process. And honestly, I think when we finally got to New York here and release day happened, that's when we knew the record was done. <laughs> and I had an order of French fries, which was the holdout. Fries come when the record yeah. was done. Ah, that's the reward. And that was a reward. Ketchup, no ketchup? Oh, yeah. All right. Tabasco and ketchup. Oh, very nice. Yeah, mixed together. <laughs> <laughs> How long is it going to be till you get fries again? <laughs> uh, a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so over the past several years, a point of conversation is how you sort of retreated from the spotlight. Mm -hmm. But why was that important for you to do? And why was it almost necessary? Well, at the time, um, all I knew was... I was toast uh, yeah. and I needed to stop and it wasn't a popular thing at the time. Everybody wanted you to rock till you drop. You know, mm -hmm. that was the sort of philosophy back then. But uh, I don't know, there was something in my upbringing that said I should probably stop. Yeah. And uh, I did. And again, it wasn't popular. It certainly upset and it was disappointing to all the fans. But it was something I had to do because I'd lost my passion for the music that I'd love so much. And I wasn't going to just keep going with some empty sort of connection. I mm -hmm. needed connection. So that's why I stopped. And I didn't know if it was going to come back, to, on, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I just kept going. And then years go by. And the further away I got from it, the more I kind of thought I'll just keep going that way. You know? Mm-hmm. I like how you said it wasn't popular to do that at the time because now you see really young pop stars and artists being really open about the fact that they do need to take a step back. I think self-care uh, is part of the whole thing now. At the time, as I said, it was rock to you drop and yeah. a lot of people were doing that. Yeah. Um, knowing that the industry might be a little more accepting towards taking your own time to do things, mm. was that encouraging at all when you thought about returning? Um, I still think the industry is... Uh, what I would call a choke chain like on a dog, you know? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it can still pull you along if you're not careful. Yeah. And you have to sort of still take care of yourself along the way and sort of fight for your right to do so. Um, because there's music which I'm passionate again about and I love very much. Thank God it came back, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also this business and the business can be a, a, a very tight collar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's really crucial to this album is this epic love story that unfolded in your life. So for those who don't know or who haven't heard yet, mm. how did that experience put you down this new path? Well, I had not been writing music, I had not been singing. I, I purposely walked away years ago. And the easiest thing for me to do was to not let my heart experience anything remotely close to trying to touch that emotional side of me so I kind of turned my heart kind of down to half mm -hmm. because I was afraid if I open that up again I might fall back in yeah so I turned my heart down to half and kept walking and then I ran into Kelly Nash and um, my life changed um, when I met Kelly she already was struggling with her breast cancer but it didn't seem to matter to us anything about that we were this other track running parallel to this track that she was already struggling with and so together we were doing that and we were together for a year and a half and then i lost her um to the disease and um after two years of um of grieving with professionals and stuff i um i found myself with a, not only just a broken heart but an open heart and um from that came rock and roll came happy songs about reunions and also um, some couple of lost songs yeah absolutely mm -hmm. they're all chronicled on here yeah one of my favorite things that you said um is that sometimes a heart isn't complete until it's truly broken mm. i think that is so profound um and really relatable for a lot of people right. uh so how did returning to music maybe mend your heart at all or do you think some people believe that it's important for a heart to stay broken uh what do you think about the repair process and piecing it together again. Mm, I think uh, the broken heart 
is the good news. I know people try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want my heart to get broken, so maybe I shouldn't do this. And I did that myself too. Yeah, it guards um, you. Yeah, you guard it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and enough already with that. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and uh, I think that's a natural reaction. I just don't want to feel the pain. Right. But the truth is, um, looks like life is full of that. And so I think push ourselves into it. And that's what I ended up doing. And uh, it sort of pushed me into it. And I came out of it with. Um, with an open heart, and uh, it's because it was broken, uh, and more complete, I think. I guess it's what needed to happen. I think everybody gets what they need, whether they like it or not, at some point. You know? Yeah, and when you don't really expect it sometimes, too. And when you too. don't expect it, it's probably the best time to get some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you look you know? the other way, and then something comes at I, you. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you're looking the other way is when it hits you from this <laughs> side. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you said that you've always considered your voice a work in progress. Yeah. It still is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it like to get reacquainted, though, after so much time had passed? It was different because when I was writing these songs, I would start sketching ideas and, and I would start with um, people say, do you warm up and all that? No. <laughs> I usually sing the verse stuff first and then the verse stuff can warm me up to where I get to the chorus. Then I start to try to do some warm up stuff in the chorus, more demanding choruses. Are. Yeah. But verses, the first time you throw a paintbrush across a canvas there's something great about the first stroke across that bl blank canvas mm -hmm. and I think singing a verse for instance not warmed up is very similar and you can get um, you can get things said in a way that you'd never say again like I know it's been a long time coming is the opening line to Renault Racing that was just off the cuff yeah and uh, it became the line and I didn't touch it I left it there and it set the tone for the rest of the song so totally that's kind of the importance of just sort of stroking the brush against a blank canvas and it feels conversational too it feels yeah. like you're opening up this entire dialogue with right. that line right 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 it it, it it launches you into a place for sure oh, from yeah. a songwriting standpoint it definitely launches a certain amount of direction and now requirement to where is this going mm -hmm. you know exactly yeah after you recorded that line, did you know where the album was going? It took a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took a while to get the record, you know, uh, launched and moving forward. Uh, it was really an, originally going to be 10 songs, but more songs kept coming. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's five bonus tracks, total of 15, um, which are available at my uh, .com mm -hmm. and also Target. But those extra five songs actually belong on the record, too. But uh, since I cut vinyl... There are time limitations on vinyl. Yeah, of course. So we have five and five on the vinyl, you know. Yeah. But there's actually a double vinyl with the 15. Too. There you go. So you fit so it all in. <laughs> I put it all I squeezed it all in eventually, yeah. <laughs> um, throughout the entire recording process, did you ever get nervous or have a moment of questioning what you really wanted to do? I did. I did. Yeah. I built my own studio right. and um, got my own engineer, Tom, and just started to record on these sketches that I had built. And I had that hard drive that everything was on and I had no management, had no record label, and I was paying for everything myself, including my engineer and my studio. So the reason I did that is because I wanted the creative freedom that if I don't like what happens or I don't believe what's happening coming out of me, because mm -hmm. I was a little trepidatious about like, well, where's this going to go? Right. And I'm hard on myself. So if I don't believe what I'm singing, I'm not going to let you hear it. Yeah. I, I won't. So I knew I had the power at that point to delete everything on the drive if I wanted to. And believe it or not, I kind of had that exercise in my mind possible had I not liked what I got. And then I started liking what I was getting. <laughs> <laughs> and I started believing what I was getting. And, and, and what happens is... For me, there's certain things will happen, and I'll start to go, well, that's kind of cool. Th well, well, maybe if I, and then I could, you know, mm -hmm. it goes like that. Yeah. And so one idea starts to open up another idea, another idea. That's when I get goosebumps on my arm, and I'm kind of excited. <laughs> you know? There's something comforting about knowing you have the complete control and power to not put it out if you don't want to. It's important to me personally. Absolutely, yeah. 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 I think it probably helps the creative process too. Cause I think it does, especially nothing. after all these years. Yeah, exactly. Stay and definitely away, paid go off. away. <laughs> and if, if you don't love it, leave it alone. <laughs> but I love it. I do love it. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah. So I know um, you never really cared for what the critics would say about Journey's music. Never gave a rat's. <laughs> 
Do you have the same mindset about your own solo music, specifically with this album? Don't give up. Perfect. He just doesn't care. <laughs> I don't care. Because, look, I'm the one who has to sing it, let it go. Believe me, I have more critics in my head than you can you have fill enough. the Beacon Theater <laughs> with, okay? Yeah. All right? So we don't need any more. <laughs> <laughs> enough people have weighed in already. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've got plenty of criticism in my own process. Yeah. So now that the album is out, mm -hmm. what is up next for you? What are you looking to do? Um, vacation, <laughs> maybe nice. a week off, you know, <laughs> uh, then I think we're going to start talking about perhaps, uh, the idea of doing some shows. We haven't really got into too much of a details of what that could or couldn't be. Yeah. Um, uncle Steve hasn't toured in a while, as you know. Right. Um, so we're going to talk about that next. In, in this moment, how, how do you feel about the prospect of returning to the stage? Oh my goodness. Well, when I did it with the Eels, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was 2014 at the uh, Fitzpatrick Theater. Mm -hmm. um, he had asked me to come out there and do some songs with him. And I yeah. loved his song, It's a Mofo. I'll say Mofo because <laughs> I don't know if, if this is okay. Uh, I love that song. And so I wanted to sing that song. And then we did a few Journey songs. Um, it was a thrill to be on stage again. It really was. Yeah. And, I'd forgotten what that felt like because it had been 25 years since right. I was on a stage. And so that was a real thrill for me personally and, and to, to see the people and and try to go get that voice that they want me to bring them right. uh, that I can't get by myself unless I'm in front of them. Yeah, it's, it's something it's that a, comes out of the live it's performance. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship that they're pulling out of me. I can't get that unless I'm in front of them. It's kind of the way it is. Yeah. Steve needs you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that about does it. Again, congratulations on thank the new you. album. And thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you very much. All right.